Guys, before we get stuck into this episode, we just want to let you know to save the date. So March 8th and 9th, 2024, we are going to be holding a camp out event, but it's not your typical camp out event. It's no. for a very special reason. Yep, so we're calling it Camp for a Cure, and it is to raise money for Love Your Sister. So Love Your Sister was created by Samuel Johnson and he created this charity to raise money for um, scientific research into cancer after his sister Connie uh, struggled with the disease. So you know that we've both been affected if you've been following from the start. Uh, yeah. We've both, both lost a parent to cancer. Yeah. So this is just our way to do whatever we can to give back. Really just to help so that other people hopefully don't go through the same situation we did. But it's going to be an awesome camp out. Two nights at Gucci Creek Escape, which is north of Gympie. Uh, we're going to have food, live music, heaps of giveaways. Yeah, we've also got our friends Bryce and Chelsea from Caravan Adventure Oz joining us for the weekend, so it'll be a good chance to meet them as well. Yeah, so what's the other thing that's happening? Alex is shaving his head. Yeah, I'm, uh, look, I'm finally cutting the locks off. It's uh, been a few years and I have been growing it for a reason. It's so that I can donate my hair to one of the charities that uh, makes wigs for people with cancer. Yeah, so keep an eye out on our socials. We'll be releasing those tickets soon. Make sure you jump on and support it so we can hopefully make it a yearly thing in future. That'd be awesome. Hope to see you there. All right, guys, as you can see behind me, we've changed the setup on the Ranger. A few of you noticed in last week's episode, and if you're following on our socials, you've seen this for a while now. Um, I'm going to show you through it all and show you how we got it, basically, and what we paid for it. So previously we were traveling with um, an ARB plastic canopy. So flip up back, slide windows. We had the tinny on the top. Uh, it served us quite well. It was cheap. I uh, got that one second hand um, and it was an all right setup, but it was very hard to access anything in there. With the sliding windows, uh, it was just, I had to climb in there so often. So I've always wanted an aluminum tray and canopy, but really, it was the cost of it that held us back from buying one. As you know, once COVID rolled around, all the really good trays and canopies, they are just worth so much money now. So we, we couldn't justify it at the time. So I follow quite a few of the Ford Ranger pages on uh, Facebook itself. And on one of those pages, I saw a bloke put up a photo of this canopy on his car and saying that he was chasing a black tub to go back to a tub. I, I contacted him. I said, look, I got a black tub, but it was no good because I'd recently backed it into my brother's car uh, like an idiot and uh, <laughs> it had a big ding in it. So um, I said, look, are you going to be selling that tray and canopy at all? And he said, yes, I am. I said, how much? I'd love to buy it off you. And um, we picked up this thing for two and a half grand, tray and canopy. So what it is, is it's, um, just a standard 1800 by I think it's 1842 tray without a headboard and then an 18 by 18 three door MRT canopy. Now at that price I just I could not pass up we had to change it anyway because I dinged up the old setup uh, and that was literally the cheapest thing I could find everything similar to this was around the four grand plus. So we got that we uh, took the tub off I've chucked on the tray and canopy. Then I went to a joint in Brisbane called uh, Easy Toolboxes, and I found this setup. So we've got the aluminium flared mud guards and the tapered toolboxes on the back. Um, they cost me $550. So we're all in for 3,050 bucks. Now for that setup, absolutely stoked. Another reason this was really good is it's got these roof racks that are wide enough for our tinny. Obviously we don't have that on yet, but that was one of the main things. We had to make sure the tinny could fit on and a lot of the um, cheaper secondhand canopies, they didn't either have roof racks at all or they weren't wide enough for our boat. All right, so let's show you through this thing. All right, passenger side of the canopy. This is where basically we wanted to set it up to live out of. Uh, we weren't going to spend big bucks on a setup in here when we didn't spend big bucks on the canopy itself. So I've done everything myself and I've tried to do it all on the cheap basically. 
Uh, so we are sponsored by Kickass. So it has a full Kickass battery system that I installed. There is a full video on the install. So if you want to know more about that, go check that out. Basically, it's 200 amp hour battery though. And um, that gives us so much power for what we want to do and for when we start doing trips and living out of the canopy a little bit more. We've got our 40 litre Evercool drawer fridge. Now this, I also picked this thing up uh, secondhand on Marketplace. We used this on our last two trips and I love, I love this fridge. 40 litres is, it's, it's a little bit dirty, <laughs> but that's what happens when you're um, on the rough roads, the uh, beards rub together and they drop all the um, colouring down on the ground. But um, that's an awesome fridge. I would like to try an upright, um, not because I want to get rid of this, but just to see how it is. A lot of people say upright fridges are really good, but until I actually try one myself, I don't know what they're like. So that might change uh, in the future. Above our fridge, we've got our uh, 12 volt travel oven, which is new to us. We've never had one of these before. And I came into it thinking, oh yeah, it'll be all right. We'll heat up a few pies and you know, that'll be about it really. We've cooked so much stuff in that thing. It is absolutely awesome. So the last thing we actually cooked was on a big travel day, I chucked um, a rack of ribs in there and four jacket potatoes for the family. My God, it was awesome. It cooked them so well. So just ran it on a low temp for ages. But yeah, if you, if you haven't had a travel um, oven before, I recommend go get one because they are just so much fun to play around with. All right, so we'll move along the back here. Um, everything I've fitted out in here with 12 mil MDF and I just painted it black. Now you'll see up the back here, we've got nothing. There's no setup. It's, it's, like, it's not nice here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's open and empty. And we just literally chucked our stuff on the ground. And that is because I'm a big believer in you have to get out there and use your setup to really know what's going to work for you and what, you know, how you want your layout to be. So I already know this isn't exactly how I want it. So I will start um, tinkering away with it and changing the setup but there's no point in spending a heaps of money and b heaps of time setting it up and then you get back from your first trip and go oh, I actually don't like how I did that so that was the idea so we just chucked everything in the back here that's no dramas um, when I did buy the canopy it already had lights in it uh, the bloke I bought it off James was an electrician so he did, did a nice job putting these two strip lights up under here and then you've got, on each door, you've got a um, LED strip light. So they're all on individual switches, which is awesome. It was something I didn't have to do. All right, so one thing about this tray and canopy is the tray is just slightly wider than the canopy itself. And it's got this little lip on the edge. Now, uh, I didn't love that at first because I like the look of everything being nice and flush, but it's, it's actually worked out really well because from our previous caravan, we had this table laying around. Uh, it wasn't working on our new setup, but brought it out to the canopy, clipped straight on the edge there. So while we don't have a nice uh, pantry pull-out section with a slide-out table or anything like that, this is our table, chuck mount induction cooker on there, prep food on there, it's awesome. We've pulled it out at like every stop that we've pulled up at, so love that we've got that. Uh, come around the back here, so this is a three-door canopy. Now. Initially, I didn't really want a three-door canopy, but it's actually gonna work in our favor because when we get it set up for the tinny, I'm gonna have the outboard sitting right here. So nice, easy access, and um, it means I can just lift it out without having to buy one of the expensive uh, outboard slides that sits in the back so you can get it out the side doors. The only uh, other negative of having a three-door canopy is the fact that I don't have a spare tire on here. I don't have a jerry can holder. Um, I can't put other stuff on the back, but it's okay. Our 32 inch spare tire just sits underneath still. So I don't have to worry too much about that, but it means I can't have a gas bottle on here. So we'll sort something else out there. On the other side of the canopy. So 
we travel with two fairly large dogs. They're, they're around 25 kilos each. And uh, when we did post the photo of the new tray and canopy on Instagram and Facebook, a lot of people commented saying, how are the dogs gonna go in there? It's gonna get way too hot. They're gonna struggle. Uh, we've now traveled in it for six weeks with the dogs. And I, I can say safely, no dramas at all. Uh, we got out into some temps of around 37 degrees out uh, West Queensland and it was really good. So what we've done is without having a dog box, I had to um, basically make it so we can get some ventilation into the canopy itself. So I've gone ahead and I've drilled a heap of holes just with, the, with a uh, bi-metal hole saw, cleaned it all up with a file. And then I bought this cover, canvas cover from Tage Outdoors, and that just rolls up and clips open. Got two of those. That just clips open and um, lets ventilation into the canopy. So inside here, this is where I've built in the dog section. So I didn't want it to go all the way to the back because I wanted to make sure, make sure I had enough room for the outboard itself. So we just chucked the dog beds in here. We've got these cooling mats. I put in a 12 volt fan. I'm not too happy with that one. It's a cheap one we had laying around. I'm gonna replace that with a Sirocco. Uh, but this section here is plenty big enough for the dogs and they love being in here. They absolutely love it. Like we opened this door, Cooper jumped straight in. Um, I did insulate it with uh, a bit of this, uh, it's like an underflooring insulation that my brother got me. Uh, it, it's pretty good for now, but we will be replacing that. Uh, I will go get some proper foil board, some thicker stuff, and I'll insulate this better. But in saying that, the dogs have been absolutely fine in here. It hasn't got too hot at all. Um, yeah, it's been good. So no dramas there. Just on that, if you've been following us for a while, you know that I'm a panicker. So of course I panic about the dogs getting hot in there. So I absolutely would not let them get in there if it was too hot for them. Yeah. So I, I'm checking it constantly, all the temperatures, every time we pull over, I've constantly got my hand in there checking it. So yeah, we can safely say it doesn't get too hot for them. But like I said, we will change it up a little bit. We'll make it even cooler in there for them. Okay, so let's talk about our under tray toolboxes. So they are 650 mil long, tapered toolbox. In this side, I basically got my lithium jump start pack. We've got our eye check um, tire repair puncture kit, our travel shovel. It's amazing actually how much you can fit in these toolboxes. And then just all recovery gear. So we've got a snatch strap, some de-shackles, um, our dampener for the snatchy. And there's still room left in there. So I can't believe how much you can actually fit in these things. It's crazy. Um, come around the other side, show you in this one. I'm literally just running my air compressor and hoses and air compressor fittings. So they fit in there nicely. I haven't wired it in yet. I will hard wire this in, but that reaches my battery system with the Anderson plug on it and um, works really well. So I'll show you more on that uh, compressor later. I, um, it's a cheap one. It works really well. And I did a few mods to make it pretty much as good as your ARB and TJM compressors. So like I mentioned before, we do have a three and a half meter Quintrex Explorer tinny. That will be going on the roof. Uh, I'm going to set it up with a winch this time. Last time we were just pulling it on and off because it only weighs around 50 to 60 kilos for the hull. So that will be a setup I will tackle later. I'll show you through that when I do it. All right, so downsides of buying a secondhand canopy. It's gonna have a few flaws and this does. Uh, so as soon as we bought it, we noticed it had a little crack up in the corner here. So I've just got to take it somewhere, try to get that uh, TIG welded back up. Uh, they might have to put a little fish plate on it. I don't know, but it hasn't affected it too badly, except for when you go to close it, you'll see, just sits out a bit. But hey, we shove it in, turn the lock, it's all good. These locks are pretty average. Um, two of them don't lock properly. Not two on one side, so don't try to break in. Uh, but they're just, they're not as good as your whale tail locks like we've got on these toolboxes. So I will look at, pretty much I'm gonna search marketplace and find some cheap whale tail locks because anyone who's bought those know they're expensive and we do have six locks on this canopy 
to replace if I want to do them all. The other downside of putting the tray and canopy on was the uh, reverse camera. If you jump under here, I have mounted it there. So when I got the canopy, uh, they had it mounted up the back of the tray. It was right here, but I could not see the tow ball at all. So I couldn't back it up to the caravan to hitch it up. So I moved it down under here, which I can see it, but I now have no depth perception. Depth per <laughs> But I now have no depth per <laughs> Why can't I say that? I can't see how far away things are. Uh, so I'll have to get Erin to stand at the back here and let me know how far back to go to be lined up. So I can get it center, but I cannot get it lined up underneath the tow ball. So that's our cheap train canopy setup, guys. Uh, we absolutely love it. I'll just grab that camera for a sec. Aaron, you are one of those people that you really didn't care what was on back of the car. What's no. your thoughts about it now? I like it. It's a lot more usable and that's all I'm really after. <laughs> yep. So like Aaron just said, so much more usable. You got access from every side. Uh, it's just, it's made our living out of the back of the car so much better. And we do live out of here a lot more, even though we've got the caravan in tow. Uh, now, in showing you all this, I'm not trying to tell you that you should buy yourself a cheap one and not spend the money on one of the flash canopies that are out there because in all honesty, if we had the money, we would have one of those ones on the back there. There's so many good brands out there. But for now, this does us perfectly. And um, yeah, absolutely stoked with it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.